So, now that we know about the 3D space effect, the arms, and the light effect, let's take a look to this machine. So, here you can see all the elements we have in this machine the animations, inputs, listeners, and layers. One thing I change here is the way that the control follows the cursor. Instead of using the hitbox and the listener, I'm going to use the X and Y values. And the reason is because this way I can track the position of the cursor outside to that board. So let's see how work these values. Here in the layer, you can see we have a X layer and Y layer. In the X layer, there is a blend state to mix these two animations, left and right. And here, in the animation, you can see we have these two animations. What happened here is that in the left animation, I use a key for the position of the contour on the left. And in the right animation, I use a key for the right position. Back to the blank state, you can see that I use a zero value for the left and 100 for the right. This does mean that when the value is zero, the position of the cursor is on the left, and when the value is 100, the position of the cursor is on the right. Other thing we have here is the input we are going to use with this blank state, that is the numx. Now, because this type of blank state is not linear, the value increase in each position, we need to reset this value. And for that, I have another layer, reset x, on the left of the x layer, where we only need the animation that the value is zero, that is the left animation. The reason that this layer needs to be on the left is because the way that the state machine mix is from the right to the left. This way, the x layer with the blank state mix on top of this layer, resetting the value. For the y, I have the same, but with the position of the control in the top and bottom, and the reset layer too. Now, let's see the rest of the layer. Here is the idle. And if I click in this animation, you can see that what happened is a simple idle animation of the character floating in the space. For this animation, I use the control I create in the 3D space and the control of the arms. Back to the steam machine, this animation works as a loop. So when I play the steam machine, it's always working even when I move the cursor. Then we have a group of layers for the different planets. And this is because this planet has an simple interaction. So let's take a look at one of them. You can see we have different states. This, the first, is the idol of the planet. And what happened here is that this planet don't move. And you can see that I have some keys in the scale. Then we have the bone thing of the planet, and you can see here that I use different keys for the scale to create the animation. So, back to the steam machine, we have some conditions. To go from idle to bone thing, the condition is that this input needs to be fired. And to go back, there is no condition. But we have this option, exit time 100%, that means when the animation finishes, when is 100%, go back to idle. So if I play this machine, when I use this input, you can see how the planet bounces and go back. This other bone thing is to create the bone thing several times. And in this case, these two conditions have the same input. And this other, the exit time. So when I use the input, the planet bound and go back. And when I use the input several times, you can see what happens. Other thing is that I use a listener for each planet and using a shape of the planet as a hitbox. And the option pointer down, that means when I click on this hitbox, fire these inputs. So this way I can interact with the planet in the editor. The next layer we have here is the blink. 
And this is a simple uh, bling animation of the character. And the last one is the windows. Here, this blend state controls the size of the windows of the helmet to adapt to different devices. The way that this blend state works is mixing these two animations, Helmet 0 and Helmet 100. In Helmet 0, I key the position of the arms and these two bones that control the size of the windows. And in Helmet 100, I change the position of the arms and the bones like this. So now using this input, num size, you can change the size of the windows. And that's it. This is everything that you need to know about this hero animation. Now we are going to see how you can implement this animation in a web.